Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen ben Danun, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the Foreign Press Corps, and in his speech, he took the time to express to the, to the press that was present there that they had a freedom, unlike other Middle Eastern countries, to express what they want, photograph practically anything they would like, and write as I said, anything they wish. And as he's commented in the meeting there, and many of you do exactly that. But as, as he pointed out, there's not that same freedom in other countries, as we've seen recently in Syria, where the beheading of two journalists there, and also in other countries where journalists have been murdered by the different factions for reporting the things that they stand for and the beliefs that they have. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu went on to say that Israel is the only country that has a democracy and freedom in the Middle East and that there is none other like it. Another point that he brought out during this particular meeting was he took time to show how that it was a, a major mistake for the uh, people in Europe to actually the European Union and the different member states there to bring charges and accusations against the IDF, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces uh, war crimes. They want to bring them to trial as well. The vote did pass where Hamas has been removed from the terrorist list. I'd like to share with you, just in a moment here, what the Prime Minister st said during his speech to the Foreign Corps Press on this very issue uh, regarding Hamas. Take a look at this. So when, so when Europeans, Europeans say, say that, that they're, they're frustrated, we say, join, join the club. club. And I don't believe that frustration can be an excuse for wrong policy. Removing a, the terrorist designation of Hamas is a grave mistake. Hamas is a ruthless terrorist organization with a proven track record of brutal terror attacks against innocent civilians. By the way, not only Israelis. Hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of Palestinians who have been murdered by them. Just this year, Hamas kidnapped and murdered three Israeli teenagers. It launched thousands of rocket attacks indiscriminately at our children and our civilians. And it celebrated just recently the murder of innocent worshipers massacred in a Jerusalem synagogue and called upon its followers to commit more such terrorist atrocities. Some um, erroneously believe that Hamas terror is a function of a failed peace process. Well, I'll remind all of you that in the heyday of Oslo, when leaders across the globe were excited about the new momentum of the peace process, hundreds of Israelis were the victims of one of Hamas's most brutal terror campaigns. Now, it was said then that Hamas uses terror to destroy the peace. And it is said now that Hamas uses terror because there is no peace. Well, the truth is that Hamas uses terrorism against Israel because it's a terrorist organization committed to Israel's destruction. It's as simple as that. In other headlines as well, new news that has been breaking over in the United States has gone all over the world. It was reported also in Israel National News that the world leaders hailed the U.S.-Cuba announcement. Uh, it says here in the article that, that Israel National News wrote, Arut Shiva, world leaders welcome the groundbreaking news that the United States and Cuba are moving to restore diplomatic relationships and bury one of the last vestiges of Cold War after more than 50 years of hostilities. Uh, the, from China to Chile, uh, Plotus range out uh, South American leaders holding a trade meeting in Argentina interrupted their session and broke into euphoric applause. So the announcement that is to uh, President Barack Obama normalizing relationships with uh, Cuba. So according to some of the other news media outlets as well as reported that the negotiations, negotiations between the White House and Cuba and secret meetings have been going on for more than a year now and that they will be normalizing relationships with Cuba. Uh, and as the president brought out that the old way of dealing with the communistic regime never did work, it was time for a new direction. Just only goes to show that the president is not worried about communism in his back door. What next might take place? Only who knows, who, who really even knows. Uh, Hamas also holds the largest military uh, uh, 
exercise since the Operation Protective Edge last night in Israel. Uh, people in the northern part of, the, uh, of Gaza there could hear the shelling and bombing from midnight up until the breaking of day as the soldiers were practicing, according to Israeli um, uh, military sources there in Israel, that it was the largest number of troops involved uh, by Hamas in practicing for an engagement. Uh, they actually uh, were attacking using as, as one of their staging areas one of Israel's fo uh, former Israeli um, uh, settlement areas there in the Gaza that was handed back over to uh, the Gazan territory to Hamas. Uh, Israel National News reported here says Hamas military wing uh, the is of al uh, Din al Qassam brigades held an extensive military exercise on the ruins of two former Israeli villages, which was Dugget and uh, Nasanit in Gaza during the wee hours of Thursday morning. This was reported on Channel 10 News. Uh, they brought the source from there. These villages were evacuated during the Israeli disengagement from Gaza in 2005. The terrorist organization Hamas quickly took over the coastal enclave. The exercise started around midnight and continued until dawn. The number of of uh, Al uh, Qassam troops who participated was much larger than usual, leading to speculation that this was the largest military exercise conducted by Hamas since the Operation Protective Edge. Uh, it's also there is a lot of uh, speculation, which no doubt will will come to fruition, that Hezbollah in the north and Lebanon is also preparing a war for Israel. Hamas in Gaza is also preparing a war. For Israel Now, as the Prime Minister pointed out in the interview that we played for you moments ago, the, the leadership of Hamas has declared publicly, even after that uh, the, the, the Europe has uh, removed them from their terrorist organization, that they are intent on annihilating Israel completely and to murder every Israeli citizen. No, it's amazing that, that the, the world community has no more sense than it does to, to, to remove them from a terrorist organization. Also, in other news, in Israel, near Hebron, another attempted abduction takes place not far from where the three, three teenage boys that were abducted uh, just months ago and were murdered by, uh, by Hamas terrorists. It says uh, in a, a, another article here reported that an Israeli citizen survived a kidnapping attempt uh, by Palestinian Arab terrorists. He reported to police Wednesday night the citizen who remains unnamed told local police that he was standing at the bus stop at the Alliance of the intersection near Karat Arab when a jeep pulled up with one, one, one driver and one passenger. It stated in the article that they, they tried to grab him and pull him into the car, but he was able to fight and to get away. They sped away in the jeep. The police uh, since have beefed up security in that area and also looking for the assailants that actually... Uh, tried to perpetrate, perpetrate the attack. You can find all these news uh, articles uh, as well as Arut Shiva, but you can also find them at our Facebook page, Israeli News Live on Facebook, and of course other articles, many more articles on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. I'm Stephen Bendenu with Israeli News Live. Shalom. <laughs>